Arnold Bocklin, an artist known for his originality and independence, defies easy categorization. His art encompasses a wide range of subjects, including traditional romantic landscapes, mythological creatures of classical painting, scientific advancements of the 19th century, humor, and the essence of the German spirit. Even during his lifetime, Bocklin was a controversial figure, and his impact continues to cause disruptions in the art history world today. Initially supported by only a few followers and patrons, his masterpieces eventually found their way into every household in the German-speaking world by the end of his life. Island of the Dead and Villa Over the Sea were particularly beloved among the European public. These works influenced artists across Europe to such an extent that symbolism as a whole cannot be discussed without considering Bocklin's contributions. Arnold Bocklin was born in Basel, Switzerland, 1827, and was named after a character in Friedrich Schiller's play William Tell. Setting off on a life of travel, Bocklin left Switzerland at a young age to study painting at the Dusseldorf Academy of Art from 1845 to 1847. His mentors at the Academy were the landscape painter Johann Wilhelm Schirmer and the romantic painter Carl Friedrich Lessing. During this time, he was also introduced to the Nazarene movement, a group of young German painters from the early 19th century who paved the way for anti-academic art. Many of Bocklin's early works from this period revolved around images of the Swiss Alps, influenced by his instructors at the Academy. The influence of Caspar David Friedrich is evident in Bocklin's use of dramatic lighting and color to convey the expressive character of the landscapes. Paintings such as Landscape with Castle Ruins laid the foundation for transforming Romanticism's concepts into the visual language of symbolism, culminating in Bocklin's masterpiece, Island of the Dead. In 1848, Arnold Bocklin embarked on a journey to Antwerp, Brussels, and Paris to further his artistic training. During his travels, he found inspiration in Eugène Delacroix and Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot's works. While many of his contemporaries embraced the revolutions of 1848, Bocklin was appalled by the bloodshed during the June days and spent considerable time observing the transportation of prisoners to their executions. He returned to his homeland from France and fulfilled his mandatory service in the Swiss army between 1848 and 1849. By the beginning of 1850, feeling stifled in Basel, Bocklin embarked on another journey, choosing the city of Rome as his next destination. One of Arnold Bocklin's pivotal decisions as an independent artist was to travel to Rome. Surrounded by ancient ruins, Renaissance, religious iconography, and Baroque art, he began to diverge from the artistic ideals of his youth. Rather than seeking to revive the traditions of the ancient culture, Bocklin drew inspiration from them to create something new. The images and statues he encountered in Rome became the building blocks of his own mythological world, infused with personal observations and contemporary scientific discoveries. Bocklin immersed himself in ancient mythology, which formed the thematic core of Renaissance art, extracting the morals and principles from these narratives. According to one of his students, Bocklin's encounter with Raphael's Vatican murals and Pompeian wall paintings in Rome profoundly affected him, steering him away from his previous path. Bocklin's newfound appreciation for myth, manifested in his mature paintings of the 1860s and 1870s, offering a unique reinterpretation of classical mythology through a personal and at times even comical lens. During his initial visit to Rome, Bocklin met Angela Pascucci, the 17-year-old daughter of a papal guard whom he married in 1853. Angela became his life partner and muse, inspiring many of Bocklin's depictions of female nudes. Their marriage faced challenges, including the deaths of five of their 14 children and Arnold's declining health. It was also a source of unease for their families due to their different religious backgrounds, Bocklin Protestant and Angela Catholic. Throughout the latter half of the 19th century, Bocklin continually shifted his residence among various cities. After living in Munich, Basel, Zurich and Weimar, he eventually returned to Italy. Bocklin's popularity grew partly due to the widespread circulation of etchings of his paintings by the Berlin-based art dealer Fritz Gerlitt. 
These etchings, commissioned by the talented graphic artist Max Klinger, were widely distributed among the German middle class. For a brief period of two years, Bocklin even held a professorship at the Weimar Academy on the recommendation of his friend and colleague Franz von Lenbach. Despite his academic training and professorial role, Bocklin refused to conform to traditional artistic practices and rejected the notion of being a socially accepted artist, yet he was not socially isolated. Among his contemporaries, he was often associated with Anselm Feuerbach and Hans von Maris as a Deutschromer, a name for a group of German-speaking painters and sculptors active in Italy. Alongside his poverty, this perception lent Bocklin an aura of being a haunted and solitary artist. Critics noted that his art turned away from the surface appearances of nature and historical trivialities, delving instead into the inner imagination and dreams of the German people. Despite seemingly being on the path to success and earning the title of a prince painter, Bachlin felt disillusioned by his role as a professor serving the Grand Duke. He viewed ambitions for artistic fame as idle pursuits. Escaping what he referred to as the art riff-raff, Bachlin ultimately found solace in Italy. From 1876 onwards, he spent most of his time in and around Florence, with a brief intermission between 1886 and 1892 when he resided in Zurich. Despite the challenge of categorizing his art within a specific movement, Arnold Bocklin emerged as a central figure of German symbolism by the end of the 19th century. This period in Europe was marked by widespread instability and a sense of resignation in the face of a materialistic environment. The rapid industrialization and modernization trends fostered pessimism among certain intellectual circles, leading to a desire for escapism into the realm of imaginary and transcendent imagery. Bocklin's symbolist artwork found its place in this new melancholic world. To gain a deeper understanding of German symbolism as a whole, one can examine Bocklin's self-portrait with Death Playing a Fiddle from 1872. This painting not only offers a glimpse into the artist's mind, but also materializes the essence of the German soul during the 19th century. Bocklin realistically depicts himself standing at his easel, while a skeleton with a violin approaches him. The unreal is portrayed in a manner that makes it appear as natural as the artist's figure, a technique referred to by art historians as naturalistic permutation. In this case, it means that individuals and objects rendered with faithful attention to nature are presented in a connection that is impossible in everyday reality. Bocklin remained active in his artistic pursuits until the last moments of his life, painting almost until the end. In 1893, he painted his own portrait depicting a vigorous man with a grey beard and sharp eyes, concealing the health issues he was experiencing. As he neared the end of his life, Bocklin became the subject of a genuine personality cult. In his History of Painting in the 19th century, Richard Mother, published in 1894, celebrated Bocklin as the founder of a new and greatly desired art. Similar to Beatlemania, a Bocklin fever emerged, placing him among the pantheon of cultural heroes alongside the likes of Homer, Phidias, Shakespeare, Dürer, Goethe and Wagner. His stature was even recognized in France with Charles Saunier proclaiming him a genius. With fame came homage, as seen when Johannes Brahms visited Bocklin in his Zurich studio in 1887, and Grand Duke Karl Alexander von Sachsen Weimar visited his Florence studio in 1894. On his 70th birthday in 1897, retrospective exhibitions of his art were held in Berlin, Hamburg and Basel. On January 16, 1901, Arnold Bocklin passed away at his home, Villa Bellagio, near Fiesole. He was buried at the Campo Santo Agli Allori, the Protestant cemetery outside Florence. Italian newspapers proudly spoke of his connection to their country, recognizing him as an artist of universal value. Bocklin's paintings were renowned as symbols of modern humanity. Throughout his life, he actively influenced numerous symbolist-leaning painters. After his death, the grotesque characteristics of his works became a fascination for younger modern artists. Bocklin's influence extended beyond visual arts, inspiring romantic composers such as Sergei Rachmaninoff and John Sibelius. Unlike the avant-garde artists of the early 20th century, Bocklin's departure from academic painting conventions was more accidental due to his attempts to blend various painting styles. 
He never considered himself a modern artist, but rather an heir to the great tradition of post-Renaissance art.